Hey, how's everyone doing? This is going to be my second album review. This one's going to be on Stone Temple Pilots' Perdita. Now, this is their eighth studio album. It's pretty crazy to think after all these years, they've only come out with eight albums. I just want to say, I think the promotion on this album was really bad because even though I am a Stone Temple Pilots fan and I was excited for this album, I did forget about it. I mean, I honestly, I forgot about it to the point that I didn't even listen to it for the first time until a few days after it came out. Most bands are promoting like crazy and it's like you remember the date when it's going to come out and you're hearing multiple singles come out and you know about it for a while. But with them, I mean, they were pretty, I don't think they did a great job promoting it. They were pretty quiet about things in my opinion. This is the second album with Jeff Goot. He's uh, the third singer of the band. Scott Weiland was the main singer. Then it went to Chester Bennington, now we're on to Jeff Goot. So the last album he did, which was the first album he did with the band, um, I thought it was very good. I was happy with it. I didn't have too many complaints at all. I thought it was a really impressive first effort. Stone Temple Pilots, along with Jeff Goot, has Dean DeLeo on lead guitar, Robert DeLeo, his brother, on bass guitar, and Eric Kretz on drums. Those are the three original members that have been with the band the entire time. Perdita came out on February 7th of this year, and the genre of the album is labeled as soft rock, folk, alternative rock. It's an all-acoustic album. Now, when they announced that it was going to be an all-acoustic album, I'm not going to lie, I was pretty disappointed. Because Stone Temple Pilots, you know, they're a hard rocking band and that's what all their material has been pretty much. You know, you'll have some acoustic songs here and there or some slower songs for sure, which are good, but don't get me wrong. But a full album acoustic, I just wasn't too big of a fan of that. I was like, dang. But either way, I knew I was going to listen to it no matter what. I'm just not an acoustic guy. I don't hate acoustic, but I just... I don't love it and it's not something I listen to every day and it's just not something I've always really been into that much and you know it's just I knew going into it I probably wasn't going to be a huge fan of this album. First track, Fare Thee Well. Now this is the only single released from the album so far and I think this is a good song. You know it's very calm, peaceful. Um, I think this whole album is very calm and peaceful. It's very very soft it's nothing like they've ever done before and i don't mean this as an insult but the music on this album did remind me of like being in an elevator like elevator music like i said i think it's a good song but i don't think it's a great song by any means it's nothing that i added to my personal library anything like that but it's a good song second song three wishes this is this is the first time in the album where i get reminded of shangri la di da the album they did in 2001 they have a section in that album where they have like three slow songs right in, a, right in a row. I'm talking about Wonderful, Black Again, Hello, It's Late. I'm not a big fan of those songs. They're okay, but this is one of those songs that reminds me of that section of the album. And there's a few songs that I could like, I could put in Shangri-La Di Da, and it's almost like you wouldn't even tell the difference. Third song, the title track, Perdita. I think this is the best song in the album. I think it has a cool riff. You know, a repetitive riff, but a cool one. I think this should have been the single favorite song on the album for me. Fourth song, I didn't know the time. This one is, has an interesting sound filter on it. I think the bass is very prominent. It's probably the most prominent bass song in, in the whole album. You can definitely hear Robert's bass. This one also includes a flute throughout. And I'm not against the flute or anything, but all I could think about hearing it was thinking about fucking Ron Burgundy from Anchorman the whole time. This album is filled with instruments like this, you know, violins and, you know, cellos, a bunch of stuff like that, a bunch of instruments they've never worked with before. If you're wondering if it's fucking Eric Kretz in the back playing violin or some shit, no, it's, it's a bunch of additional personnel that are, frankly, people I've never even heard of. They're the people doing the alternative instruments for the most part. Five years. This one has Robert DeLeo on lead vocals. Now, this is, this is when I was really thinking about Man, I can't believe it's taken him this long to have Robert on lead vocals. Especially with how much him and Dean control the band. You would think at some point he would have gotten a lead vocal spot over the years, but we finally get it with this album in years. Six, She's My Queen, Seven Miles Away. Eight, You Found Yourself While Losing Your Heart. Nine, I Once Sat At Your Table. This is an instrumental where I thought the album would end, but it actually doesn't. It goes to the tenth song, Sunburst. And I think this is the perfect song to end the album. It has a cool little outro, dramatic outro. It fades out. Overall, do I like this album? 
as I predicted, no, not really. The thing about this album is, it's just not for me. I'm not gonna sit here and say it's a bad album. It's not a bad album by any means. It's just not for me, not my personal taste. But I think there are people out there that would definitely like this album for what it gives you. I kind of wish it was just like half acoustic, half hard rock. Going into it, I was really hoping we'd get some songs like The Art of Letting Go. Really loved that song off the last album, but nothing I took away from this album really reminded me of that and gave me that feeling. In the end, I'm, I'm gonna commend them for putting an album out like this. Apparently they've been wanting to do this for a long time. It's something that is very artistic. They're really showing their creativity, their diversity. I love that. That's the main thing I took away from this album is how diverse this band is and how these guys are. It is receiving generally favorable reviews. I'll give this album a 7.7 7 out of 10. And there you have it. I've been wanting to do this review for a very long time. Finally got it done. Hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, what I really want to say real quick is be careful with the coronavirus out there. It is serious. Don't panic like a lot of these dipshits buying fucking eight packs of toilet paper. But you know, be cautious and just don't be a fucking idiot like Rudy Gobert. I'm really hoping this doesn't get to the point where I'm not able to go to the Scorpions concert in Las Vegas in July. We already received our tickets and everything. And just my Vegas trip in general, I don't want that to get canceled because of the flight traveling and all that. But it's becoming a huge thing, as I'm sure you already know. So that's all I got for you guys today. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please comment, like, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.